This is going to be a new um, project that I've been talking to um, Dr. Kumar about to hosting a space with him, but you know, make it really short and simple. How are you doing today, Dr. Kumar? Doing really well. Dr. Kumar? You doing? Yes, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I can hear you so, guys. Um, I, I pinned the article you sent me. Uh, yeah, I, pin, I pinned yes. the article um, that you sent me. I thought that was really interesting. And it's, I mean, we, we've been talking about the, um, when people get long haul COVID or getting COVID, what it does and it ages the person. Because, uh, uh, I mean, let's talk a little bit about mitochondria to kind of explain to people. Because I think I mentioned that word. Some people are kind of like didn't quite understood that. It's, it's I don't know. Maybe just certain people are not into understanding their body, but mitochondria is, is a very important thing to learn about yourself. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about mitochondria just briefly, if if everybody is okay with that. So mitochondria is what's called the power generator of the body, of the cell. Okay. So you have the nucleus on one side and what's called the cytoplasm on the other side, and all of them in, are enveloped in what's called the cell membrane. So within that, we have these tiny little uh, motors that it takes in oxygen, the food that we eat, the glucose that it get, gets converted to, and the water that we drink. And that's uh, mitochondria is responsible for churning out uh, the energy molecule that keeps the, uh, the nucleus healthy, the cytoplasm healthy, and the function of the cells uh, going on uh, as it should, uh, according to whatever site that cell is located in. So it's so critical for us to have the mitochondria functioning at its optimum for anybody to be really healthy. And so one of the problems with aging is a deterioration of the function of the mitochondria. And so that somehow contributes to the aging of the entire body because the mitochondria is present in nearly every cell in the body. You know, not nearly, it's in all cells in the body. So the problem is, you know, with the article that just came out that... Um, Tanya has spent, you know, right above this, you know, is telling us that the reason that these long COVID symptoms occur is because of dysfunction of the mitochondria, which means in some method, whether it's an inflammatory process or direct effect of the viruses on the cells, that the mitochondria is really messed up, which means that there is lack of quote unquote energy production. So without energy, nothing is going to happen. It's like, uh, you know, if you live in a city called like Palm Beach, if the electricity company shuts down, everything everything goes dark. And if it, everything goes dark, nothing works. You know, and factories are shut down. You know, the entire thing, uh, the function of the community comes to a screeching halt. That's exactly what happens. Okay. May not to be that extent, but at least there's an indication that the long COVID uh, symptoms that a lot of these folks are um, experiencing is most likely because of mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, in the article, they also suggest a technique of trying to regenerate the mitochondria. And their technique is basically exercise. You know, if you exercise, you're going to build up uh, the quality and the quantity of the mitochondria. Now, that is true. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the way, reasons why we encourage people to exercise. But the problem in somebody with long COVID, you know, with their lungs uh, the way they are, you know, dysfunctioning and the, uh, the heart doing what it is doing and with the fatigue that's setting in, uh, I don't know how many of these folks would be interested in going out and exercising and building up their muscles. Uh, you know, so... The recommendation that they've given in this article, uh, you know, for me, I don't think it's the best recommendation. So one of the hacks that we can think about is considering other alternatives to keep the mitochondria functioning to its optimal level. And the two things that we talk about um, is, again, not specifically with long COVID, but any kind of mitochondrial dysfunction that occurs, whether it's because of aging, stress issues, you know, drug abuse, whatever, aging um, um, and long COVID is by helping recover the energy process using NAD and to use what's called red light, red light therapy. 
So those are the two things that, in my opinion, will be a lot more easier to do to help regenerate uh, the mitochondria. And this, so it's like turning the lights back on uh, in, in, in a city where the lights have been shut down or the electricity has gone out of action. So that, in brief, is where the role of uh, mitochondria and, in my opinion, the ways that we can help regenerate that. And in my experience, you know, again, it's not a whole lot of patients. We've seen some really miraculous changes and recovery, especially when it comes to the fatigue that uh, long COVID patients experience, the mental health issues that they experience, um, and just their overall health. I think you see a whole lot of recovery. Uh, again, we don't have a study to show that NAD IV has a direct impact on, on uh, the mitochondria, but uh, anecdotally, I think we have enough evidence to show that it does, it may have a benefit, but for sure, if it is done right, it has very few side effects. So there's a lot of upside to using NAD supplements and very little downside, if done right. So, but again, yeah. I urge every patient to kind of talk to their physicians, talk to me, talk to some experts before you kind of jump in, assuming, you know, whatever's going on with you folks. All right.